everybody. So today, we're going to be doing a follow-up on the last collection video that I did, and that time was my Game Boy Advance games and my original DS games. So today, we're going to be doing a part two of it, technically, of the series, I suppose. <laughs> and today we're going to be looking at my 3DS games. Now, I don't have all of them with me today, but that's only because we would be here till doomsday by the time I was done showing you all of them. <laughs> and I'm also lending them out to people, so... Um, yeah, it would, be, it would be kind of a pain in the butt to try and get them all back, to be fair. <laughs> but I think you guys will like the amount that I have already. So what I didn't do the last time was show you what my consoles are. I mean, I'm sure all of you have seen my my 2DS XL, but um, you haven't seen my other portable console, which is a little dusty. Hang on, <laughs> I don't use it that much, but it is it does come in handy every now and again. It has its purposes, which is my. Oop, that's way too zoomed in. Ignore the baby toys in the corner. <laughs> They're not mine. Is my 2DS. It is the black and red color variant, as you can see. What do I have in here? Oh, I have... Oops, hang on. I have Tales of the Abyss for the 3DS. That game's really good. You guys should, you guys should go look it up. Um... It's, it's another Tales of game, but this one has a really cool story. Um, just a disclaimer, though, if you have played other Tales games, um, you'll know what I mean whenever I say this, but if you don't, this is a like, complete gibberish. The skits in this one aren't voiced, which some people, that drove them crazy, and some people didn't care, but yeah, just disclaimer, there's no voice acting in the skits in this, so, yeah. <laughs> Most of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, I, I really like this. Um, I, to be fair, I also didn't spend that much on it. But I really, I love how these shoulder buttons make noise. Listen. That's so fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really like it. I think it's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's nice to have, in case you're playing with people, that don't have a 3DS and they want to play like Mario Kart or um, Mario Party, stuff like that. Um, it's a nice alternative. So you can be like, oh, don't worry, here, I, I brought one for you. Um, I also love that shaped like toast. <laughs> I think it looks like a piece of toast. It's adorable. Uh, yeah, I only paid like, I think I paid like $60 for it. I mean, it's a console for 60 bucks. What are you gonna expect? Um, but I, I really like it. I don't like the fact that there's only one speaker. That's kind of weird. But um, it does have a headphone jack right here. So that kind of kind of vetoes this. <laughs> and the home button's down here. And it's made of rubber, which is really weird. But, oh well. And there's a little sleep mode switch. Which is kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I didn't spend that much on it, so I'm not like too concerned. But I actually can, sometimes I actually can prefer using this to be honest. If my hands are tired or it's something that requires a lot of like shoulder button action, um, I actually can prefer using this more. I played a lot of Dragon Quest VIII on this one, which I will show you guys later. <laughs> but yeah, that's my 2DS. Best sixty dollar toast I ever bought. And then I'm sure you guys have seen this one, but this is my new 2DS XL. I also love this noise, listen. So cool. Um, but yeah, this is also really nice because it has these extra buttons up here that the original 3DSs don't have. And 
I do have one complaint about this though, which is the stylus. It's extremely small. Look how tiny that is. That's ridiculous. Nobody wants a stylus that small Nintendo. What is wrong with you? Come on. Let, okay, let me show you the comparison to this, to the, my Toast's stylus. Seriously. <laughs> That's pretty sad. But yeah, minor complaint. I don't use the stylus that much, to be honest. Anyway, this is the inside here. My camera will not want to focus on anything today. I swear to God. Let's see if maybe that works better. But yeah, this is pretty nice. I really like the fact that it has this extra little nub right here. I call it the nipple. Everybody calls it a Nintendo nipple. Um, but I really liked the fact that it was orange for its um, complementary color because I love the color orange. <laughs> Best color ever. But yeah, other than that, it's it's very nice. Um, I really like it. I love the matte feel it has for the white parts, as you can hear. But yeah. Anyway, I spent way too long showing you guys those things, so right as of now, we're going to start the actual point of the video. <laughs> Alright, so the first one I'm going to show you, which is one I'm pretty sure every single person in the universe got whenever the th it came out, was Super Mario 3D Land. And this game is very, very good. Whether you, you know, whether you have played a lot of Mario games or you haven't, I'm also, again, sorry for my fingernail. <laughs> They're not going to get any better. I, I'm i not perfect, okay? Just don't judge me. Um, I thought this was so, so cool whenever it came out. I mean, it still is, but it kind of got overruled with its uh, technical sequel, which is uh, Super Mario 3D World. That game is like a perfect game. Th this isn't perfect, but it is pretty close. Um, but yeah, I really loved the fact that it was like a, a, a new type of Mario game where it wasn't 3D, but it was an old school platforming one. And I thought that was just like so cool. I might actually do a video on Super Mario 3D Land. I mean, you, you can play it obviously without the 3D aspect on because like, let's be honest, this was like pretty much the only game that people used it for and that was it. <laughs> but... Uh, it's okay if you don't use it because some people can't even see 3ds and they've I imagine quite a few people have played through it. So I think I'll be okay Next up we have Lego Batman 2 DC superheroes. This is actually really good. Um, I mean, let's be honest. It's a it's a Lego game like <laughs> every Lego game is good, but um, This one was really good because it wasn't like a really crappy watered down version of the lego games like sometimes you'll see like a, a, a 3ds lego game and it's not very good or it's not like an, it's not exactly like the home console ones but this one is actually a direct port of the home console ones i'm pretty i'm pretty sure i don't think it has the open world part but um, it does have all the stages i also only paid like ten dollars for this so i mean <laughs> can't you can't really be too, too salty on that but yeah it is really cool Ooh, this was one of my favorites whenever it came out, which was Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Oh my goodness. If you have been watching my channel, you know that I love the Donkey Kong Country games. Like, really, 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 really love them. And this one was no exception. This game is fantastic. Um, I don't quite like it as much as I like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That one's really good. Um, this one was a little easier, which I don't, I didn't really like that much. I kind of like the fact that they're a little hard. Um, and this one's not like super, super, super hard, but maybe I just played it too much. <laughs> I find it easy. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is really sweet. You can find this pretty cheap used anywhere. Like you, I think I got mine for like 15 bucks, um, but I would really recommend it. Ouch. Please ignore my elbow cracking every time I move it. 
this one's gonna be really hard for you to see, so I'm just going to have to tell you what it is, and you'll just have to trust me. But next up we have Shin Megami Tensei 4, and this is gonna sound ridiculous, but this is literally an M-rated Pokemon. Easiest way to describe it. Um, you, you fight demons in this game, and you get to collect different demons, and you get to use like turn-based attacks, and some have weaknesses to certain elements and attacks and all that fun stuff. And it also has a really very thought-provoking story that involves a lot of biblical references. So if that triggers you, I'm sorry, you will not like this. But if you are very, very interested in, you know, like, um, Christianity and uh, satanic lore and all that, a lot of jazz. Um, this is a really good game. It has a very, very interesting story. It's also insanely long. I think I, I think I beat it within like forty or fifty hours, which is, that's pretty lengthy for like a three DS game, to be honest. So yeah, you get to check it out. It's super cheap. Uh, it's also very hard to find though. But if you can find it, it's usually about like seventeen bucks. Ow! <laughs> my God, my elbow. I don't know what is wrong with it today. Okay. Next up, we have The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, and I'm pretty sure every, also, every, this is another game that like pretty much every single person in the universe has for the 3DS because it is a near-perfect game in everyone's opinion. Um, I'm not, I shouldn't say that I'm not like a huge fan of it. It's okay. It's not the best Zelda game I've ever played. I think everybody tends to give it a bit too much praise in my humble opinion. Um, to be fair though, I also have not played its like prequel, I think, um, A Link to the Past, but I was thinking about playing it for the channel. But I would like to have some tips while I play it because that game is uh, very intimidating. <laughs> I've, I've only played like a very, very teeny tiny bit of it, like the first like 20 minutes or so. But um, yeah, this, this is good. Um, like I said, it's not my favorite Zelda game in the world, but it, I mean, it's not a bad one to say the least. It's just, it was very different. Okay, these ones are part of a collection or a series, sort of, so I'll just kind of quick fire through all of them. And it is the Pokemon series. So I have Pokemon Oregano, Orega? no, not Pokemon Oregano. Could you imagine? Pokemon Oregano, Pokemon Basil. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dork. Um, we have Pokemon Omega Ruby. I also have, um, I also have Alpha Sapphire, but I'm lending it to my sister right now. And I also have Pokemon Y. Same thing, I also have Pokemon X. Lending it to my sister. And I also have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Gates to Infinity. This is a very controversial one because a lot of people hate this game. But I actually really, really, really liked it. Like... A lot. Like, I was crying at the end of this one. I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you've played it, then you understand what I'm talking about. All I have to say, this is, like, not really spoiling. The end features, like, the main character crying. Let me just put it that way. It is very, very depressing, but I really liked it. The text is insanely slow in this, so whenever you're reading, it goes, like, do 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 and you can't skip it, which is kind of frustrating. But other than that, um, it's very good. Uh, don't get Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. That game is terrible. But this one's fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And obviously, these games are good too, because it's Pokemon, and Pokemon's always good, in my opinion. I also have um, Pokemon Moon, but I think my brother-in-law is playing it. Um... I have a lot of games that people don't give back. <laughs> it's okay, I don't really care that much. I'm not in a huge rush. Um, this one's not technically mine, but I'll show it to you anyway. Um, this is my best friend Maggie's game, and she was like, yo, you totally have to play this game, it's so good. And I'm like, I played the first few minutes, and I was like, um, this is kind of scary. And it is Corpse Party. And if you know what this game is, then... You know what I'm talking about, but this game is kind of scary. Um, it's sort of like a pretty much like um, it's pretty much a visual novel, kind of, not really. It's it's kind of like a weird hybrid of like a platformer 
in an exploration game mixed with like visual novel aspects, but it is a very, very, very gory and very scary. So I don't know if I will play any more of it, but we'll see. Maybe I'll play it with her. That might make more sense. But uh, yeah, if you know what this game is, um, let me know in the comments if you have seen this game and what you thought of it. If it's not as scary as I think it is, then I might play it. But from what I saw, first impressions weren't uh, exactly colorful and happy, to say the least. <laughs> Next up on the list, which is a game that I have not played very much of, but I've been told it's very good, um, is Rune Factory 4. I have, mind you, I have played a few of the other moon, moon factories. No. <laughs> I don't know how to talk today. Um, I have played the second Rune Factory quite a bit. And I also played quite a lot of the third one. And I, I really like the Wii one too, but I haven't played very much of it. Uh, mostly because I don't personally own it. But um, this one's okay. I don't really like it that much, to be honest. It's not my favorite one, but um, maybe I just haven't gotten into it too much yet. It could be one of those types of games, you know, like the story takes a while for you to get into. But um, yeah, it's all right. This was the first one. You're, I think it's the first one that you can play as a girl. So that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, Root Factory 4. <laughs> so next up is one that's also technically of a series. And it is the Mario Party games. So this one here is the first Mario Party game they made for the 3DS, and that's Mario Party Island Tour. And I'm gonna be honest, this is a bit a bit of a mixed one. Um, this one they went kind of weird. Where I shouldn't say they went weird. They went more. They wanted to pander to a wide audience, so they wanted. They have boards in this that take like that can take like a half hour, which is you know nothing out of the ordinary for Mario Party. But then there's also boards that would, can take up that could take like ten minutes, and those aren't very good in my opinion. <laughs> um, but the mini games in this one are really really fun. I really liked them, and the longer boards are actually quite enjoyable. I've actually this is one of the highest time played games on my 3DS. To be completely honest, <laughs> I just play it by myself because I'm a dork. Oops, these are backwards. Next up we have Mario Party Star Rush, and this is also very fun as well, especially if you're playing with more than one person. Um, this one they went really, really different, where it's kind of like a grid-based board game, where you all you all move at the same time, and you all have to try and beat the boss minigame to get stars, and you can gather different allies, like you all play as toads and like Mario or Toda could be on the board and if you go past Mario you get to you he gets to be on your team so whenever you're playing like the boss mini games and whatnot they actually help you in the boss fights which I thought was really cool um and yeah the mini games mm, kind of hit or miss in this one but um the boss mini games were quite fun in this um I've had a lot of my friends play this one and they really liked it so I think you guys would really enjoy it and last but certainly not least is Mario Party the top 100 and oh my goodness this game is quite controversial a lot of people don't like it because they're like oh it's just mini games and blah, blah blah but I thought it was fun they actually made some of the mini games a little easier which is nice in my opinion like bumper balls doesn't always end in a tie <laughs> which is fantastic and I mean let's be honest if you just wanted this game for just the mini games you can't really be too upset with it but i didn't really really like the fact that it was like it's a full price game and it's just mini games so that's kind of lame um they do have a board game mode in it but it's like a super watered down version of this one um so i wouldn't recommend buying it specifically for the board game mode to be honest but um it, it's all right if you can find a used copy or if you can like trade in some games to eb games or something um and get it a little cheaper it's pretty fun I liked it, but Island 2 is still my favorite. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Um, I'll show you this one. I played it quite a bit of it whenever I got it, but I kind of stopped playing it for a while. And that's the Ultimate NES Remix game. And this is a compilation of NES Remix 1 for the Wii U and NES Remix 2 for the Wii U as well. Um, this game was kind of hard to explain, where it's it's kind of like WarioWare 
and Game & Watch Gallery at the same time, mixed with like NES games, I think, where actually, if you've ever played WarioWare and you played the 9-volt stages where they're like um, Nintendo-based micro games, it's something similar to that, but think if they were micro games, but they like rearranged, mixed up a bunch of stuff. So like Mario's in the Zelda game and like you could play as Samus and Super Mario Bros. 2 and all that crazy stuff, or one of the challenges will be like, beat the first Mario level backwards, or don't touch any of the Goombas, and just like weird things like that. Um, but it is it is pretty fun, I actually really enjoyed it, but the, the missions were starting to get really hard and I couldn't beat them, so I think that's why I put it away for a while. Um, but I actually really enjoyed this, it's quite good. Alright, next one. Oh my goodness, I have clocked in a lot of time with this game. And I hope you guys have at least heard of it. And that is Fantasy Life. Oh my gosh. This game is amazing. It's so good. If you like Animal Crossing, or if you have played the Rune Factory games, or uh, I'm trying to think of what else would be, or Animal, oh I just said Animal Crossing. <laughs> if you like Animal Crossing, or Animal Crossing, or you know that game, Animal Crossing? <laughs> Um, you're gonna really like this game. It's very cool. Um, it's like Animal Crossing mixed with Final Fantasy, where it's like Animal Crossing because it's like cutesy and you can like kind of like run around and do whatever you want, but it's also like Final Fantasy where it does have a story to it. Um, and there's also different job classes you can be in this, so you can be like a knight or a hunter or a wizard. Um, and it's really, really neat. Um, I don't really know what else to tell you much about this. It's kind of a hard game to describe, but it's made by Level 5, and Level 5 always makes amazing games. Like, you you will never get a crappy Level 5 game. So, yeah, this one's pretty sweet. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Codename Steam. This game is very strange. Um, if you have ever played Valkyria Chronicles, this is pretty much the exact same style of game. Um, where it's a tactical grid-based third-person shooter, where it's a, kind of similar to XCOM, a little bit, but not really, uh, where it, if it's your turn, you get to go to a specific grid, and then you get to aim at the enemy, but it's it's not in real time, so you get to take time, like, aiming up your shot, picking where you want to shoot, like, aiming for an arm or a head or whatever, and then whenever you're ready, then you fire, and then, you know, everyone else's turn goes and then it's the enemy's turn they can do the same thing and so on and so forth but yeah this game was like a massive failure for nintendo unfortunately like it didn't sell very well um i got this for like i think it was like five dollars at a store but i thought it was pretty cool so sorry for that weird cut there my vid my uh phone only lets me record like 30 minute at a time videos and that one was getting close so i figured i'd stop it before i ended up not making any sense, if you know what I mean, <laughs> before it cut me off. So the next game that we have, and I do have the second one to this, but I'll tell you about that in a second, is oops, Kirby Triple Deluxe. They also made a second 3DS game for Kirby, and it was, um, they actually technically made three, but I'm, I'm talking about like mainstream ones. Um, it is Kirby Planet Robobot, but my Again, I'm, I'm letting it out at the moment. Um, these games are amazing. They're so good. This is probably one of my favorite Kirby games. I also really liked Kirby Star Allies for the Switch. That one is pretty up in my favorites. But the Wii Kirby games are my favorite. Kirby's Epic Yarn and Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Oh my goodness, they're so good. If you have a Wii U, you need to go get those right now. They're so fun. <laughs> So yeah, this one is not is pretty much just like a standard Kirby game. Like you run around and eat bad guys and you get copy abilities. What I don't like about the 3DS ones is there's no multiplayer in them for like the story mode, which is kind of boring, especially because they had multiplayer in the Wii Kirby game. So like they had multiplayer in like Kirby and the Rainbow Curse and uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland and Kirby's Epic Yarn. And they had, they've had multiplayer in pretty much all of them, but they didn't have any in these ones, which is odd. I don't know if it was like a console limitation thing or what, but yeah, I was a little bummed by that. But they still hold up pretty well. Okay, next one is one that I technically don't play, but it was rare, so I didn't get rid of it. Um, and 
that is Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. And by I don't play it, it meaning I um, I have it on my Wii U, and this actually doesn't play that well, in my opinion. Uh, the screen, it's definitely not a game you want to play on a really tiny screen. You will want to play it on a TV, um, regardless of the size. But yeah, it is really, really fun. Uh, if you can get over the very British voice acting, which is not bad, it's just, if you're not British, it's very jarring hearing everybody in a, speaking in a British accent of, like, different areas of Britain, if you know what I mean. Um, sorry if I keep moving my hands, my foot's itchy, so I have to keep scratching it with my other hands. I keep getting all balance. Um, it is really good, though. This is very hard to find, and it's also very expensive. I think I paid, like, $50 for this. It's crazy. But, yeah, I just haven't gotten... I just don't have the, the heart to get rid of it. But it is really good. Next up, we have... Puzzle and Dragons Z plus Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Bros. Edition. This game is going to be hard to explain. Um, it's kind of like a match three RPG game, kind of. <laughs> um, it's like if Pokemon and Candy Crush had a baby. <laughs> if that makes any sense, which I feel like it doesn't, but if you've played these games that you know what I'm talking about, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but it is really fun. Um, I haven't played the Z one. This is two games in one. Um, these two games are completely different. Like, they have different stories, different battle mechanics, whatever. Um, I honestly only bought it just so I could play the Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Bros. Edition because I saw it on a trailer and I thought it looked really cute. And it is really cute. Um, but it's also insanely difficult. <laughs> which is odd for a Mario game. But, yeah, it is really cool. Um, you actually can download Puzzle and Dragons on your phone for free. Um, so I would definitely suggest you guys download and try it. It is very fun. I would highly recommend it. Watch out for those microtransactions. Next we have a Project Cross Zone, or as everybody else calls it, Project X Zone, which is not correct. Um, this game is also very hard to describe. It's a grid-based tactics RPG, but it's also kind of like a fighting game <laughs> if that makes any sense um it's a cross between capcom namco bandai and sega so it has characters from all of the franchises well not sonic obviously because that'd be kind of weird but they have like um mega man and characters from tales of vesperia and um who do they have from the sega universe some characters from virtua fighter and all that cool stuff, and it just is an absolutely bonkers story, but it is super fun, um, and the voice acting is really good in it, so I would recommend maybe just taking a look on the eShop, I think there's a demo you can download for it, and giving it a try, but yeah, it's a very hard to explain game, but it is very fun. There's also a second one as well, and I think they, I think Bayonetta is in it? Oh wait, no, that's, um, they said they wanted to have her in it, and then Platinum Games was like, no. But, oh well. Either way, it's still really cool. Another cool game that a lot of people don't know about is Theat Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call. I don't know if I'm saying that first word right, so I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, this is a rhythm-based game. So if you've ever played, like, the Hatsune Miku games or Persona 4 Dancing All Night, anything like that, like, this is almost the exact same. It's not much different. Um, but yeah, it includes all the song, pretty much every song known to mankind that's been in the Final Fantasy game, from like the original Final Fantasy all the way up to like Final Fantasy XIV, which is crazy. Uh, XV didn't exist when the first came out, but it is really, really, really fun. It's also insanely hard to find, so you, I, if you can, you're better off just downloading this, but it's pretty cool. Next up on the list we have... Kid Icarus Uprising, and this game is very, very fun, um, but it can also give you massive hand cramps, so do not play it for a very long period of time. This is just a straight-up third-person shooter, and an, an on-rails third-person shooter at the same time. Um, all the stages are set up in two different phases, so the, ouch, so the first phase is the on-rails third-person shooter part where you're flying in the sky, for I think it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, sorry, my foot's itchy again. And 
the second phase is just like a straight up third person shooter. So you're just like running around beating up bad guys, fighting the boss, solving puzzles, all that stuff. Um, it's, it's really good. The voice acting in it is hilarious. Oh my gosh, it is so funny. They picked the perfect character or uh, actors for Politana and uh, Pitt. They're so funny. Oh my gosh. And they kept the same voice actors for Super Smash Bros, which is really neat. But yeah, this game is super, super fun. The multiplayer in this is also insanely addictive. So yeah, um, just don't play it for more than half an hour or you're going to have like, I don't know, just hand cramps. Oops. So sorry for that noise. Oh, there's a hair attached to this one. Gross. I'm shedding. Next we have, uh, I'm not even sure if you can even technically call this a game, but it's Tomo Dachi Life. And ASMR decks, if you're watching this, then you understand why I'm saying this isn't really technically a game. It's more like a... I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't make this an app on phones, but I don't even know how to explain what this game is. It's kind of like Habbo Hotel, if anybody remembers what that is. So, like, you can check up on your Mies, they all live in their apartments, and you can, like, make different voices for them, and... You can like dress them up and watch them live their li lives. I had a word vomit there. And they can get married and have kids and all that fun stuff. And it's just absolutely bonkers. It is so strange, but it's also insanely hilarious and so fun. Um, I love this game. It, I will never get rid of this game. It is so good. Oh my gosh. I've had it since it like did the day it came out. Um, it was so funny. <laughs> But yeah, you guys should definitely check this out. It is really, really funny. All right. So we're more than halfway done here. And the next one I'm going to show you is Etrian Odyssey 4 Legends of the Titan. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, to be completely honest, this isn't my favorite Etrian Odyssey game. Um, I didn't start with this one. I played the and beat the first Etrian Odyssey game, like the remade one for the 3DS, and I really liked that one. And I played a small bit of the second one, and it's okay, but it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. The first one was definitely my favorite. And then I went to this one, and this one doesn't have any voice acting, and it doesn't really have much of a story. Um, yeah, so I didn't realize that the other two were remade ones. I thought they were just like the first one, the second game. So I was kind of shocked that this one didn't have like any voice acting, none of the characters talk. <laughs> I thought that was kind of odd. And apparently the fifth one is the same as this one here where there's no voice acting for the characters and there's not really much story to it and all that fun stuff. Um, but I mean, it's not that bad. It's a, it's a pen and paper RPG. So whenever you're fighting, or turn-based one. So whenever you're fighting, you don't see your and your characters actually attack. Like it'll be like, Rusty Dan attacks. Rusty Dan deals twenty-seven damage, um, which is pretty old school. And I thought that was cool. But um, what's really neat about the, these games is you have um, you're in giant labyrinths. It's a first-person dungeon crawler, um, and you're in different labyrinths and mazes, and you have to draw out your map on the bottom of the screen like you had to back in the day. Um, where they didn't have a map, so like you would get a pen and paper and just like draw the map as you walked along, which was kind of adorable. Um, but yeah, it's not my favorite one, but it's not bad to say the least. I just, I just wish I would have started with this one. But oh well. Next up is one that I'm sure all of you have at least seen or played at least once in some way, shape, or form, and that is Star Fox 64 3D. I really like this game. This game is very fun. Um, I actually hadn't played any Star Fox game up until the GameCube ones. So, it, oops, sorry, my foot's itchy again. So it was refreshing to see like where the series came from. I mean, the Super Nintendo ones are pretty bad. <laughs> I have played those ones. Um, they, I, I, they have not aged very well, but this has definitely aged pretty well. Um, and it's just a, it's just a an on-rail space shooter so you like you fly around the spaceship and you shoot aliens and bosses and meteors and you can get power-ups and bombs um it's I, I i really enjoyed it it's very fun i also have the wii u star fox game too and oh my goodness i absolutely love that one it's so fun 
who doesn't love marsupials shooting each other in spaceships? So the next one is very, 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 very strange, and also slightly sun faded, so I'm sorry. And that is uh, Conception 3, Children of the Seven Stars. I'm actually not even going to tell you what this game is. Y you can go look it up yourself and you'll understand why I'm not going to tell you anything about it because, my god, I could spend an entire video explaining what this game is. <laughs> but yeah, Conception 2, Children of the Seven Stars. You go look it up and you go tell me what you think about this game. I'm very curious to know. <laughs> it's... I'm not even going to say. Nope. I'm not even going to say. You'll, you can find out for yourself. <laughs> Next up, we also have another game that is slightly controversial in terms of whether people like it or not. It is Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. And I actually thoroughly enjoy this game. Um, it's very relaxing. You know, if you're ever bored and you just want something quick to do for like 20 minutes or so, it's fun just to sit outside underneath the shade of a tree and just play it for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, this Animal Crossing game, all you do in it is design people's houses, but it, it is really fun, and all of the amiibos and all the amiibo cards work for this game. So if you have a specific villager, like if you have a favorite villager that you want to design their house, um, just because you're like best buds and you, you totally want to just, you know, do a nice thing for them, um, it's really cute. I really liked it. Should it have been $50? Not really. Um, but I got it anyway, so, you know, no judgment. You can get this for, like, $20 now, though, so, um, if you just want something quick to do and you're bored, and you're like, oh, I don't really want to use my brain that much, or if you're having really bad anxiety, I find this game actually really helps me with anxiety, um, because it just, it gets my mind off, and I can use my different parts of my brain to, like, think, like, okay, what color goes with this type of table and whatever, um, if that makes any sense. I feel like it doesn't, but um, this is really fun. I, I, I really liked it. Can you sense there's a pattern? I tend to like games that people don't like. Next up is a game that I have not played very much, but my bestie has, and she said it is very good. And that is Return to Popo La Croix, A Story of Seasons Fairy Tale. And I know that that looks like it should say Popo La Croix, but that is literally how they say it in the game, is Kreis. I, I know. I'm sorry, Frenchies. Um, this is a really weird game where it's like Harvest Moon in a turn-based RPG put together. Um, and it has like a cute little story. This is actually based off of an anime and a manga, I think, called Pupple of Kreis. And we didn't... I don't think we've received any of the games outside of Japan besides this one. This one just came out like a couple of years back. When was it? This one came out three years ago in 2015. Um, and it is really, it's very cute. Um, it's not very hard, so if you just want like a really cute, easy game to play that has an interesting story, um, you guys would probably would really like this one. There's also a wolf in this one called Blue, and she's super adorable. And she makes cute little bark noises. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna show you what's inside my 3DS, even though it doesn't technically say 3DS. Oops. Even though it doesn't technically say 3DS on it, that's how old it is. Uh, pouch. These are the games that I play a lot of. So first up we have... Mario Golf World Tour. This game is very fun. Um, I am a huge fan of the Mario Golf games. They're very, very good in my opinion. I absolutely love all of them. Um, and this one is no obsession. No obsession. Why do I keep saying that in videos? This is no uh, exception. Why is that word so hard? Um, but it does have it. They did kind of do like a paywall thing where they blocked. They locked off a lot of content, um, and you have to buy it as DLC. Like they unlocked. They locked like four different characters and like t three or four different courses, which is kind of lame. So you only end up having like six courses instead of like the nine they usually have or so. So that was kind of annoying, but other than that, this is very fun. I don't think the DLC is very expensive, though, so that's not too bad. But yeah, Mario Golf. Ouch. This game also isn't mine, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway, because this series is absolutely bonkers in a good way. And that is Zero Time Dilemma. 
and this is a this is from a trio of games called the Zero the Zero Escape series, and it is a visual novel slash escape the room puzzle game. Um, yeah, that's basically what it is. You can get all of the games on the Vita. The I think you can get yeah you can get them on the Vita. You can get them on the PS4. And you can get all of them on um, Steam, I think. And they're very, very good. Um, but I'm not very good at the puzzles, so I just always cheat and just look up the guides on how to do them because I just want to play the story. <laughs> because I'm a terrible person. But um, the story, this is the, these games have like one of the best stories I've ever seen in a video game ever, period. Like, it's insane. But yeah, you guys should, if you guys like visual novel, dark story games, you will absolutely 1000% love these games. Next up, and I, the only reason this is in here is because if I, I'm always praying and hoping that I find somebody that has this game that will play it with me, or two other people, and that is The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. And this game is insanely fun, especially if you were a fan of the Four Swords games they had back in the day. Um, it's very, it's almost no different than, than those games. It, it's pretty much the same idea. Um, but the only thing is, this will not let you... This will let you play single player, but not in a very good way. Basically, you play as one of the links, and the other two links are just like dolls, and you can move them around and change control whenever you need to. But it's very difficult to maneuver and manage to the point like they they shouldn't have even put single player in this. To be honest, it is a, it should solely just be multiplayer. But what's annoying about this is you can only you can either play it with one person or you have to play it with three people. You cannot play it with two. And I don't, we, my friend and I don't know a third person that has this game, so we haven't played it yet. So that's why I have it in my pouch. I keep hoping I find two people one of these days, and I'm like, oh my goodness. I totally have this game as well. We should totally play it. But yeah. Oh well. A boy can dream. Next up is one that you guys definitely would have seen if you follow my main channel. And that is 7th Dragon 3 Code VFD. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. It rhymes, and it's awesome. This is a straight-up old-school turn-based RPG. Um, it's made by Sega, and I think Imagi... Imagi... Pak? Imagi Pak? Imagi Pooch? I don't remember how you pronounce their name. It's the same people that made um, Stella Glow and Luminous Arc. All that fun stuff. Um, so you can expect a high-quality game with this. I haven't played it a whole, whole bunch. Like, on maybe about, like... 15% done, but it is very, very good. Um, so if you just want really, really cool old school RPG, but you want it in like a new kind of fresh take to it, um, this is definitely one that you should, you should consider. Whew, I'm so glad we're almost done because my throat's starting to kill me. <laughs> oh, get out of there. Next up, we have Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. And I absolutely love the Luigi Mansion games. I'm so excited they're remaking the original one for the 3DS. Girl, you know I'm going to donate a kidney if I have to to get that game. Um, yeah, you basically explore this big scary mansion. In this one, you get to explore multiple big scary mansions. And you have a vacuum cleaner. You get to suck up ghosts and solve puzzles and all that fun stuff. And it is very, very fun. Um, it's also, ironically, very like funny, which is surprising considering... You know, Luigi does not look he look look little bit of that words. Luigi does not look like he is having a lot of fun, and he is not, but it is very fun watching him squirm. <laughs> the game makes light of it though. It's not like sadism where like you're enjoying his pain, but it he, he doesn't make it very hard to laugh at him. Next up we have This also isn't mine, but next up we also have The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. This game is very hard. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it is very, very hard. I've only ever played Majora's Mask once. Well, not technically once, but I've only played through it once, and I 100% completed it when I did it. Like, I got all the masks. I did all the side quests. I got all the heart containers. I got all the fairies, like, everything. Like, I got the razor sword. You Girl, you know what? Fierce deity mask. The whole shebang. And I swore to myself I would never play it ever again. And then they made the 3DS version. I'm like, God freaking dang it. 
So I tried to find it the first day it came out and I couldn't. So whenever my bestie got it and beat it, she was like, oh, you should try it again. I'm like, uh, I don't know, should I? We'll see. I haven't started it yet, but I figured if I put it in here, maybe I'll, I'll play it one of these days. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys should let me know if there's any big differences in this one between this one and the N64 ones. Like, is it is it better than the N64 one or is it worse? Like, oh, hit me up. All right, so next up is a very, very cool game. And it's called The Alliance Alive. And this game is made by the same people that made um, The Legend of Legacy and the, the what are they called? The Saga games um, for like the PlayStation 1 and stuff. Um, so the battle system in this is very odd where you don't technically level up. Oh, sorry, my foot's itchy again. Why are you it's so itchy? Prom mosquito bites. Summer's fun. Um, you level. You technically level up by using attacks frequently or anally, as I use adjective wise. Um, so you know, if you keep using a bow, then you'll start getting like more dexterity and more like speed, and you'll start learning like more bow skills and whatnot. But then, if you use an axe, then you might start getting more like attack power and defense and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just pulling those out of my butt, but it's pretty similar to that. Um, so some people like it. Some people think it's a terrible idea. I personally think it's really cool. I haven't played any of the Sokka games, so this is like a very interesting concept. Actually, I think they're the same people that made Final Fantasy 2 as well. I think they have the same battle system mechanics. But yeah, this game is really, really cool, and I would really recommend trying to find it while you can because it's an Atlas game, so you know... They're going to be pretty hard to find after a while. Next up, we have the sequel to Shin Megami Tensei 4, and that is Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. I'm not going to go too much into it because I just already explained the other game. This one's not, this one's literally the exact same. Like, they didn't really change anything, which is completely fine, but it is very good. This game is one that I haven't played a lot of, but my best friend keeps recommending it, so I figured I'd give it a fair try. And it is Ever Oasis. Apparently it was, I think somebody said it was made by the people that made the Secret of Mana game. And I really liked Secret of Mana, so I'm going to have to try this again. Or Secret of Mana, I'm sorry. I always get them mixed up. Um, if you've ever played a Zelda game, think, or the game ok Okami, it's kind of like a mixture of the two, where... It's like 3D exploration, but it's also it also has like areas you can explore and solve puzzles. Um, I don't really know how to explain it that well, so you guys will have to look it up because I haven't played very much of it. I've played like maybe like a half an hour or so, but my best friend said it's really good, and she's very picky on her games. So I think, from her opinion, she would recommend it to you guys. Now this game. I have definitely played a lot of, and it is Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King. This is my absolute hands down favorite Dragon Quest game. It is amazing. Um, it is, as I said in my last video, they're pen and paper turn-based RPGs. This one's no different, but they added a little, a little cute flair to it. Um, you get to see all the battle animations. There's voice acting. The voice acting is amazing in this, by the way. It's like some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a game. Um, and it's just, I, I love it. I would, I will recommend this game until the day I die. You need to play this game. If you have a 3DS and you like RPGs, you 100% need to play this game, please. I promise you, you will not be disappointed in this. Next up, we have Pokemon Ultra Sun. I don't really need to go too much into that. It's a Pokemon game, what do you expect? Um, but it is very good. We also have, oh my goodness, I love this game. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. And the Mario and Luigi games are same turn-based RPG, um, but it is hilarious that it all the Mario and Luigi games are really, really funny. And um, yeah, this is a remake of the original game that was on the Game Boy Advance, but um, I would totally recommend this game. It is hilarious. <laughs> oh, running out of time, I'm going to have to go through these pretty quick. Um, next, we have Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS. 
long story short, I know how to, I know, I main with all the female characters. I don't know why, but I'm very good with all of them. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Let me know who your favorite Smash character is, by the way. Next up, we have Metroid Samus Returns. This is a remake of the Game Boy game, Metroid 2. I think it's Return of Samus. I can't remember. Um, and this game, I haven't played a lot of it because I got kind of stuck. But um, I love the Metroid games, and this is very, very good. I, this won last year's best portable game of 2017. Like, that's pretty crazy, right? Go Nintendo. I could spend a whole video talking about this, but I'm not going to. Um, it is Monster Hunter Generations. Oh my gosh, this game is man freaking fantastic. I can't even tell you how much I am obsessed with Monster Hunter games. Like, it's ridiculous. I am so excited that they're making this for the Switch. And you're going to be able to carry your save data over. I'm totally going to take advantage of that. Um, this game is very good. It is what you think it is. You hunt monsters. Not really sure what to tell you from there. Think Dark Souls if you were hunt hunting your bosses. Pretty much the easiest way to explain it. And last but not least is Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker. And this is a turn-based tactical RPG version of the Shin Megami Tensei games. So it has the same battle system mechanics as Shin Megami Tensei 4, but it's set in like, um, in a grid-based battles instead of just like running around an open area and then encountering all enemies and fighting them. Um, and this is a remake of the DS version, and the record breaker part of this game is like a new story you can play, and it's Atlas said, I haven't completely beaten it yet, but Atlas has said that the Record Breaker story is almost as long as the actual story of the original game. And you can start that mode from the beginning. Like, you don't have to play through the story again in order to play the new content. So if you've already beaten it and you're like, I just want to play that, you don't have to worry about it, which is, I think, it's a nice touch. All right. So that is all of our games that we're going to be talking about today. So yeah, I guess that's the end of the video. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if there was any questions you had to ask or if you have any suggestions, um, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will do my best to reply as soon as I can. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And maybe share this with your ASMR friends that you have. And I will see all of you later.